Hi everyone, my name is Chitra and today's video is going to be all about how to shoot a stop motion video. This is our very first video, so please do subscribe to our channel. We'll be coming out with weekly photography and videography tutorials. Over the past year, I've shared many tutorials over on my Instagram on how to click stop motion. However, it is a little bit hard to convey everything that I want to teach you guys on the caption or on a 30 second video. So today's video is going to be the complete end to end process and I hope I can answer all the questions you have. This is what we're going to be covering in the video today. We'll be going over the basics of a stop motion, the equipment you need, planning the shoot and how to set up your shoot, how to shoot and how to edit. I would recommend that you watch this video through first and then attempt to make a stop motion for yourself. Come back to this video as needed. Stop motion is not a new concept. It's been around since the late 1800s and I'm going to leave a link down below if you want to read up on the history of stop motion. I do think it's quite fascinating. Stop motion was basically the original form of animation before CGI. There are various different kinds of stop motion, such as cutout stop motion, silhouettes, clay motion. But in today's video, we're going to be concentrating on object motion, specifically for reels and Instagram. The technical definition of a stop motion is stop motion animation is a filmmaking technique in which objects are physically moved in small increments and captured one frame at a time so that when played back, it gives the illusion of motion. Or basically stop motion is a bunch of photos edited together to make a video. Between each video, there's going to be small changes of the placement of the objects. This is basically what any regular video is like just like the one you're watching of me right now. A video is made up of a series of pictures. A standard video like this might have somewhere around 24 to 30 pictures per second. A stop motion usually has around five to 12 pictures. A slow-mo video might have 120 pictures and upwards. Pictures per second is more commonly and properly referred to as frames per second or FPS. To shoot a stop motion, there is essential equipment that you need to do this process. The first is your phone or your camera. I love just using my phone unless I'm doing client work. The current phone that I use is the iPhone 13 Pro. In the office, we also have an iPhone 10 and an iPhone 12, and both of them work really well, and we use all three phones interchangeably. For client work, we use a Canon DSLR, which is the Canon 200D. I recommend when you're starting out to use your phone, unless you know how to use and operate a camera in manual mode, and then you also know how to edit those pictures that you take from your camera. The second piece of equipment that you're going to need is a tripod. A tripod is essential to shooting in stop motion. Without having your phone mounted to one spot, your image and your stop motion is going to move around and this is not really a true stop motion. This is what it looks like when you don't have a tripod and your camera is constantly shifting. We tried really hard in this video to hold our camera still as we shot and as you can see, still a lot of moving around. Here's the comparison when you use a tripod versus when you don't use a tripod. Third, you will need your main product and any props that you plan to use. A remote clicker will also be helpful and just speed up the process. As you get more and more experience with clicking a stop motion, you might want to invest in studio lights. Working lighting and working studio lights does take a little bit of experience, so I don't recommend it when you're starting out. You don't really need it. For us, we always love to shoot with natural light unless it is client work. The reason why we like to use professional studio lights is that when you are shooting in natural light with the stop motion, you'll have some differences or you may have some differences. Um, if it's a cloudy day and the light is going in and out, and then between each photo, it's going to flicker a little bit with the lighting changes. But only for client work, I use professional studio lights. When I'm shooting for my small business or even when I'm shooting tutorials for you guys, I always just tend to go with natural light. You will also need a video editing software either on your phone or on your computer. On the computer, we like to edit with Adobe Premiere Pro. You can also do something like Final Cut Pro depending on what your preference is. And on my phone, I like to use InShot or VN Video Editor. In today's video, we'll be editing with InShot. Now we're going to talk a little bit about planning your shoot. Planning your shoot is an extremely important step, especially for a stop motion. You should plan out all of the props that you need, 
all of your main focus objects or your products that you might want to use and when they're going to come into the frame when they're going to leave the frame their path while they're in your frame and while you're shooting this will just allow you to have a much neater and cleaner final outcome your video will be a lot smoother and it'll be much faster to shoot the entire stop motion video here's a quick comparison of when we are planning our shoot and when we don't plan the shoot when we plan the shoot we make note of where the objects will be moving across and in this case just marking the center of the frame also which objects are coming in when with the bags i have mixed and match a little bit so you can see the difference between the bag that's coming before and the bag that's coming after. I also take a note of the spacing between each bag and how much I'm moving each bag so it's really even and not jerky. When I'm coming up with ideas on what I want to show in my stop motion, the one thing that I always think about is how would I use this product naturally? How would I use this product in everyday life or how would I unbox this product or how would I make this product? And then from there, how can I show this in a stop motion video. Some ideas that make for a good stop motion video would be unboxing, packaging videos or making of an item, or your products coming onto the frame, making a shape, for example, a heart shape for Valentine's Day, or making a number. Maybe you're celebrating your three-year anniversary for your business, or there's a 30% off sale and your products could come on the screen, make a three and a zero, and then exit the screen. Now let's go over two setups. The first setup is going to be your front view. This is a good option if you don't have a overhead tripod. You could also use this setup with a tripod hack that I like to use for those who don't have a tripod. The second setup is a top view or a bird's eye view or a overhead view setup. For this, you will need either a C-stand or a tripod that has an overhead view. So here is our front view setup. We have a static background and in front of the background, we have our table. With a static background, nothing is moving. There's no people moving around in the background and none of the objects on the shelf are moving either. You can also do this against a wall if you don't have a space in your home or in your workspace where there is not going to be any disturbance in the background or you can use some backdrop paper with a backdrop stand. You can also do a front view stop motion without having a table in the front. Here is an example that we created of a stop motion on a shelf, a stop motion with clothing racks in front of two windows, and a stop motion in a plain room with this big couch moving backwards. So as I mentioned before, one of the main things that you want to look out for when you're shooting a front view stop motion is that your background is static. Nothing in your background should be moving. If something is moving, this is what it's going to look like. Having objects or people that are moving in the background is only going to distract your audience from what you actually want to show them, which is your products moving. For the lighting, we have these big windows on one side and then on the opposite side, we have white walls. Try not to shoot stop motions on patchy days or when the clouds keep going over the sun and away from it. This creates really big lighting differences in your photos and your stop motion can look a little glitchy. I'm going to place my tripod in front of the table and my phone with the back camera facing towards where I'm shooting. When placing your phone on the tripod, just make sure that it's straight and everything is aligned. Here we're using the Measure app on iPhone just to make sure our framing is centered and straight. If you don't have a tripod, you can try fitting your phone into a glass so it sits straight. But with using this method, you will need to use a remote clicker so you don't disturb your phone and it doesn't accidentally slip. If you have an iPhone, I'm not sure if this is available on Android, but you can also plug in your corded earphones and then you use the center button which is also the trigger button when taking a photo. Now on to the overhead method. The reel that I'm going to be showing you today is going to be using this exact same method so let's go ahead and set up for that. Go ahead and get your tripod. The tripod that I'm using is going to be linked down below. You will have your own way of setting up your tripod but this is how we like to do it. I'm going to have the front two legs shortened and on the table and the third leg is going to be all the way extended and balancing on the floor. Then go ahead and pull out your overhead arm and balance it on top. 
This might take quite a few tries for you to get right, but once you've figured it out, it should be good to go for all of your future shoots. Now, as you can see, the tripod is balancing on the table, so it's going to be really important for you not to accidentally nudge the tripod or shake the table when you're shooting and moving around your props. If you don't have an overhead tripod like this, what you can do is take your regular tripod, extend out the legs all the way and then balance it on top of a table with your camera facing down and looking on the floor or also you could use a ladder and balance it on the ladder we like to use this method all the time it is a little bit tedious to get this set up so if you do do this just make sure that you get a couple of shoots out of this for both of these methods i like to use a remote clicker and have someone helping me the person helping me will be watching the screen from which i'm shooting and making sure that everything that's moving around on the table is in frame it is possible to do this without help and often that is how we do it in our office however it does make the process a little bit faster if you have someone to help you a camera in this instance can come handy because it comes with the flip out screen which you can see from the floor or wherever you're moving your objects or you could also tether your camera to your laptop or your phone and see the screen and what is actually being shot. So here is our setup. For the stop motion today, I'm going to be telling you a little story with some coffee. There's going to be a little coffee packet that is going to dance its way across the screen and then I'm going to make some coffee and enjoy it with some cookies and a book. This could be a nice story of how I'm spending Saturday evening or Sunday evening or my morning ritual. If I was a coffee brand and I was posting the stop motion, my caption might be something like how I enjoy Sundays or Sundays with our coffee and a good book. I've made a plan in my head of what exactly is going to happen in a stop motion. If this is your first time, you might just want to write out your notes just to make sure you know exactly what's happening during the shoot and you have everything that you need. The table that we're working with is the Linmon table from Ikea and I really like it because it is a matte table but it has this laminate finish which just makes it really easy to clean up any spills or any messes and it doesn't stain. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and clean up the table, make sure there is no specks or any dirt. You can edit this out during post-production but it just makes the process a lot longer and I like to just shorten the entire process so the easiest thing to do is just make sure the table is clean when you start out. The objects and props that I'm using is a coffee packet, a plate, a cup, books and some cookies. I'm gonna set all of these props to the side and let's begin the shoot. The first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to have this coffee packet and it's going to dance into the center of the frame, shake a little and then exit. Then I'm going to have the coffee fill up and the cookies and book appear. You can see that the inspiration for the shoot has come about on how someone would naturally consume or make coffee, as well as if you're a small business, showing off your product a little bit. When shooting, I do like to use the phone's native camera app. If you think about it, the camera that's attached to your phone is made to be used with this app. The app and the camera go hand in hand. So your best quality that you would get with this camera will be through this app. So now that my table is clear and I'm ready to begin, I'm just going to quickly mount my phone. The back camera is going to be facing down onto the table. I've made sure that the lens is clean and I'm going to open up the native camera app for iPhone, which is just called camera. You can tap on the photo button. And then if you go up the top, there's a little arrow, you tap on that and then you'll have a couple more options for when you're taking photos. I'm going to go over to the button that says currently it says 4.3. I'm going to tap on that and it's going to revert to 16.9. 16.9 is the ratio that you need to shoot stop motion or any kind of video for Instagram Reels. You can see as soon as I tap that, the screen extends out and everything is being shot now in a 16-9 ratio. Now my table is clean, the tripod is mounted, I have my phone in the tripod and I'm ready to begin. So to go over, remember a stop motion is a series of pictures. We're not using the video mode, we're using photo mode on the camera. A stop motion is going to be a series of pictures that you're going to edit together and make it into a video. So now that I'm on photo mode, I'm gonna take a picture of the blank table. There's nothing on the table, there's no props, no products, no coffee, just a picture of a blank table. First picture is going to be the beginning of my stop motion video. When I take this first picture, 
So you can see there's no shadows on the table. My hands are not in the picture. I made sure the table is very clean and I clicked the first picture. This is what the first picture looks like. Next, I'm going to start moving my coffee packet across the table. I'm just going to show a little tiny sliver of the coffee packet on the screen first and then just fix up my placement, remove my hands from the frame and then press the trigger button. This is what the second photo that we've taken looks like. Now I'm going to continue to move the packet across the frame. So I'm going to position it and just check that everything is looking fine on the camera. Move my hands away from the product, out of the frame, and then click the picture. So remember, you're going to move your product just a little bit and then remove your hands from the frame. Make sure there's no shadow on the table and then click your picture. Here is what the first six photos look like. One of the main questions that I get asked and it confuses a lot of people is how am I removing my hands from the video? And this is a concept that hopefully now you've understood. This is not a video that I'm clicking, it is a photo. So I arrange the object, I remove my hands, and then I click the photo. I hope I've made that as clear as possible to you guys on how this process works. My hands are never in the frame when I'm clicking the photo, so there is nothing to remove. It is a series of photos which I'm editing together to create a video. Once the packet has reached the center of the table, I'm going to move it left, right, left, right, just tilting it a little bit so it's like it's shaking just to get people to focus on the product. And now the left, right, left, right is done. Now the packet is going to exit from the other side. Again, I'm moving the packet in small increments, moving, removing my hands, pressing the click button, clicking the picture, and then going again, moving the product, removing my hands from the frame and clicking a picture and repeat. And now the product is going to exit from the side of the frame. These are all of the pictures that we have just clicked. And when you edit them together, here is what they look like. Don't worry, I am going to show you the editing process later. Now let's move along to the second part of the video, the coffee making. So I'm going to go ahead, grab my plate and my cup, and I'm going to position it onto the center of the frame. The coffee cup is directly smack bang in the center. And then I have my plate, which is around two thirds in the frame. I've picked a coffee glass with a handle because I'm actually going to be turning the glass. So I want people to see the changing of the position of the glass, which is why I picked something with a handle. With the handle, I've placed it completely straight. So it's really obvious when it does move a little bit. So now I'm checking over the screen, making sure everything is perfectly centered. Everything is in exactly the position that I wanted because after I've set it and started clicking, I can't move the plate again or I can't move the cup from its original position. I can just only turn the cup. So it's really important that I have the framing exactly right and exactly where I want it. Note at the end, we're also going to be adding some cookies and a book. So it's really important that we have the positioning absolutely correct because afterwards if the cookies don't fit on the plate or the cookies are out of frame i can't change the position of the plate and the cup now that i'm 100 percent happy with the positioning of the plate and the cup let's begin i'm going to start by clicking my very first picture and this is what that looks like next we're going to add a small teaspoon of coffee click a picture of that and then we're going to add a bigger teaspoon of coffee Next, we're adding in some sugar. Here I'm using white sugar so you can clearly tell the difference between the coffee and the sugar. These three photos, I started by adding a little bit of coffee and then a bigger teaspoon of coffee and then some white sugar. I really want the viewer to be able to see the difference between each photo. Now I'm going to start adding the water. Every time I add in a little bit of water, the cup is going to turn 90 degrees. The handle you'll see will rotate. I'm going to be extremely careful that one, I don't nudge the plate, that I don't move the cup from its original position, and just with the, when I'm pouring in the water that it doesn't spill anywhere else on the table because if I'm cleaning it up, then it can nudge some of the props, and then the entire stop motion is not gonna be as smooth as I would have liked it to be. This is also where the planning really comes into play. I want my cup to make a full 360, and to do that, I'm gonna move it four times, and each time I'm gonna add in a little bit of water, so by the time it gets back to its original position, the cup is going to be around halfway full. The planning part here is extremely important because in the beginning, you don't wanna to add too much water, so by the end, you're not adding any water. Next, I'm also gonna be adding some milk, so I wanna make sure that I have enough space in the glass to be adding the milk. I don't want the glass 
to get too filled with water and in the end I don't have enough space in the glass to be adding the milk. If I don't have enough milk, the color of the coffee is not going to change. So let's get started. Add in just a little bit of water. I have measured out exactly how much water needs to go in this cup of coffee for it to reach around the halfway mark. Again, this is where the planning really, really comes into play. Next, we're going to repeat that three more times. So I'm going to rotate the cup, add in a little bit of water, remove my hands from the frame. My hands are not in the frame, and then I'm going to click a picture. Repeat. Add a little bit of water, turn the cup, remove your hands from the frame, make sure there's no shadows, your clothes are not in the frame, you haven't accidentally left a spoon in the frame, there's no droplets of water or coffee, and then click a picture. And now we're gonna do it one more time, and now the coffee cup is back in its original position. I'm gonna quickly off screen, just mix it up a little bit so all of the coffee is dissolved. Obviously, I'm not shooting this part, and we're gonna move on to adding the milk. I'm gonna be doing the same thing with the milk. I want, when I'm adding the milk, for there to be evident and really obvious color changes between each turn and each time I add the milk and each time I also take a photo. I've measured out exactly how much milk to add. So by the time I get to the end, I still am adding milk and I haven't added all of the milk right in the first shot and between the rest of the pictures, there's really no changes. So let's go ahead and do that. We add a little bit of milk, turn the cup, remove our hands from the frame and make sure the frame is all clear and tap the click button and repeat this. To finish up this look, we're gonna add in two biscuits or cookies and a book. So I've made sure I'm really happy with the final position of the plate, the coffee. I'm happy with the color of the coffee. So I'm going to go in and add my first cookie Add in the cookie. I already know what the final placement or the final look is going to be. Um, so I'm going to add in my first cookie where I want it to be. I can move this first cookie after I'm, I've added it. So it's really important that you know what you want your final position, what you want your final image, the final spot in your video to look like. So here we go. We're adding it in our first cookie, removing our hands, clicking a picture. Let's add in the second cookie removing our hands and then clicking a picture and lastly we're going to add in a book and click the picture and here are all of the photos we took in the second half of the shoot now we're on to the editing process here are all of the pictures that we took in the shoot and here is the final video. You notice towards the end, I did add in a little extra bit. We did shoot this. This is showing the cookies and the book disappearing and the coffee disappearing as well. And this is all done in reverse. So let's get onto the editing and I'll show you how we edited all of this together. Today, we'll be editing on the InShot app. So I want you to open up your InShot app and then you're going to import in your pictures. So you find your pictures, There's, it's going to be initially on the video tab and then you're going to click photo and select all of your photos. You want to select your photos in the order that you took them. So first was the blank table and then the coffee packet dancing across. Don't import your photos in a random order because that's how they'll appear in the app and then you'll have to spend a lot of time reorganizing everything so it's in the sequence that you want. Now that we have imported all of the photos, you'll notice that they're appearing at the bottom of the screen. When you import the photos initially, each photo is going to be set to 5 seconds. When you select the photo at the bottom, you will notice on the right hand side it has a little 5.0, that's 5 seconds. What we want to do is reduce this. So I'm going to tap on the photo and then I'm going to click the duration button. And then on the duration button, I'm going to reduce it down to somewhere between 0.1 to 0.2 or even 0.3 seconds. And then there is a double tick button. Press on that and click apply to all. And this will change the duration of all of your photos. Now by setting the duration, here is what the video currently looks like. I'm going to show you what the video looks like with each photo set to 0.1 seconds, 0.2 seconds, and 0.3 seconds. You can also go in and select the timing of each photo and make it a different time. So one could be 0.1 and then you have 0.3, 0.25, and then back to 0.1. I would do this only if I'm trying to match my stop motion to the beat of a song. This does take a lot of effort, so be prepared to spend a lot of time if you do want to match your stop motion to the beat of a particular song. 
So this is how I would do the reverse part. So the book and the cookies disappearing, the coffee emptying out, and then the last shot. I'm gonna go back in and import some more photos. But this time, instead of doing it from the order in which I took the photos, I'm gonna be doing it in reverse. So first, I'm gonna select this picture where there is no book, and then this other picture where I only have one cookie, and now no cookies, and then the glass turning back around. After the glass is emptied and I've got the shot of where the table is empty again, I'm going to select this picture where the coffee packet is in the center of the frame and just twisting. So basically the entire video now has come around 360. We showed our product at the beginning, we showed how we're enjoying the product and at the end we're going to do a refocus back to the product. Here on the top on the bottom you might want to have a little writing that says shop coffee with us. We deliver worldwide, free shipping, there's a sale, something like that you can add on the end as well. And here is what the final video looks like. I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial and you've learned something new. If you haven't yet attempted to do a stop motion, hopefully this video will give you the confidence to try. If you have been trying to do stop motions for a while, hopefully you've picked up on a couple of new tips and tricks that will make your shooting experience a lot better. Next week's video is going Going to be how to shoot stop motion using the Instagram Reels editor and I'm going to be showing you the front view mode so today's video was the top view and next week's video will be the front view. I also want to quickly give a special shout out to my team. As you guys can see I am standing in a different place to where we are shooting. I wasn't able to actually be there to be shooting all of the b-roll and shooting all of the steps so a really big shout out to my team who helped me get this video done and live and helped me shoot and edit it also. If you create a stop motion with the help of this video, please do remember to tag me. I would love to see what you've come up with. I'd love to see your ideas and how you've gone about it. And then I'll see you guys next week.